Hey folks, how you doing? This is Wayne S. Pierce for the American Liberty Radio Network. How are you? AmericanLibertyRadio.com I didn't want to, uh, or I, I wasn't going to, it's not that I didn't want to, it's that I wasn't going to uh, do a podcast today. This is uh, uh, Sunday the 26th of March, 2017. I wasn't going to do one today, but I was. Uh, I saw a post, uh, which, of course, you know, I had to reply to, of course. Um, and literally, I'm going to address this post in this way. First of all, there are certain things that uh, people do. There are certain things that people say. There are certain things that that I say that some people might find, I don't know, quite, well, let's just say they think I'm wrong, which I'm not, to a point. So let me explain that for a minute because this I'm going to dovetail that into what I'm going to talk about in the first segment here. The um, the fact that I've spent number of years, I'll give you precisely what it is, since uh, Jimmy Carter was president and all that Granada thing happened where the helicopter went down and killed uh, a whole bunch of people and, you know, all, all the people on the, on the chopper and everything. This happened when he was president, right? I looked at that whole thing. I examined everything behind it, per, uh, you know, pursuant to the to the information that was being given on the mainstream media, and this is long before I had the internet. So don't give me any crap about the internet. I went to newspapers. I went to, I grabbed the the back then it was called the Stockton Record. I grabbed the Sacramento Bee, the Modesto you know Bee, and uh, San Francisco Chronicle. I was grabbing newspapers. I went uh, and and within the, all this investigation and research into you know putting all the pieces together um and starting my trip down the rabbit hole let's say uh I went to the San Joaquin County Library I went to other places because more of the answers I saw for me at that moment develop more questions and so those questions developed into more answers developed into more, you see you know how that works right so i did this it's around 1978 you know whenever that happened that granada thing happened i i don't remember exactly when it happened uh but it was around that time jimmy carter was president um and i saw a whole lot of holes in the reporting not so much reporting but the logic behind the mainstream media and i began to really go down that rabbit hole in and of itself that's not a bad thing in and of itself that's not a bad thing right to ask questions and get answers some people just stop right there but when the answers develop into more questions yeah then you have to you know Examine why you were so quick to answer that question and believe what was said. So now, here we are, the 26th of March, 2017, and someone, uh, and not someone, I should just blanket this statement and say, people are pissed off or, you know, question or, you know, throw crap at the wall to make it stick about Alex Jones. I knew about, I knew about and heard some of his episodes back in 1997, 98, 99, when he first got on, you know, you know, I heard about him and because certain people were that I was associated with at that time were talking about him. They were also talking about, this other person by the name of William Cooper. Well, William Cooper can't defend himself anymore because the feds 
shot him and murdered him. Okay. Now, how do I know that? Duh. I investigate. Okay. So, <clears throat> anywho, everybody's bitching about Alex Jones now. Oh, he got no balls. He's this, this. He's controlled opposition. He's this. I'm just going to settle that argument right now, right here on the 26th of March, 2017. Show me the canceled checks that go to Alex Jones. Show me the electronic funds transfer going to Alex Jones. Show me the connections that, uh, as this whole situation unfolded before about Stratfor, show me the connection they have. Oh, somebody worked for him that worked for Stratfor. No, no, no. That doesn't mean that they worked together to get out all this information. No. Uh, this was long after he started his network. So what did he get up to that point? What did he get when he got the information to put his police state films together? What This is long before the Stratford thing. So I don't want to hear it because <laughs> that don't fly with me. Okay. So the information that he received long before the Stratford thing is is what we need to concentrate on. We also need to concentrate on what he said about this quote-unquote Pizzagate controversy, as I'd like to call it. And so we stretch and go and do and, and, and you know, present our sides of the story in the independent media. But here's the thing. For someone to look at me, and I'm going to put this blanket statement on here, for someone to look at me and, and reply to me or whatever in some way, shape, or form and tell me that I need to stop drinking the Kool-Aid, that's a little presumptuous of you to say. Because you have absolutely, number one, no idea who I am, number two, no idea what I've done. So the two words that I'd like to tell you is shut up because you have nothing to back up what you say at all ever and never have and never will because you don't know me. So <laughs> sit and listen, boy, you're in school. You just may learn a few things. <laughs> okay. And if you're wondering, I'm drinking coffee, so... So let's go with this item here. And I'll dovetail all of what I've said into this. We got this Pizzagate thing. We got now we got people turning on Alex Jones. Now we have this. Now we have nobody should be turning on Alex Jones. I'm going to I'm I'm going to analyze this whole thing. Well, I shouldn't say whole thing. I'm kind of exaggerating. Uh, I don't have information in front of me. I could go look on Infowars or Breitbart or RT or anything. Let me sum it up with the information that I have had so far in the last two weeks uh, since this whole pizza gate thing started, you know, falling apart and becoming just a useless piece of nothing sitting on the desks of these reporters. That's exactly what it is because it is all everything has fallen apart in this. Everything, everything has fallen apart in this. Okay? Connect the dots, follow the money, go look at what's happening, go look at who's doing hit pieces on Alex Jones. Go look. See, you guys out there that say, "Oh, you're aware and awake and and you're part of the independent media and all that." You know what? You got I mean, ha uh, ha. Uh, Sit back. Let me school you on a few things. I've been doing this a hell of a lot longer than Alex Jones because I've been in the streets. I've talked to certain people involved with certain things I shall not mention in Stockton, California. I have talked to certain people in, the, in, in, in areas of In areas of Stockton, California, that an 18, 19-year-old kid should not be getting into. I was 18 or 19 years old, and I was talking to people. I was talking to my friends. They referred me to this guy. They referred me to this woman. They referred me to this department of the city. They, I was doing a lot. Oh, and this was also spending time going out to football games that friends of mine were in or going to college games or whatever. You know, I was living life. I was doing 
<laughs> what 19, 20, you know, year old people do. I was 20 years old. I went into Air Force. I got out. I, you know, spent time with my friends, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I can give you the whole, you know, story from the time I was graduated high school till the time I was 25. But I won't because it'll bore the crap out of you. But I was talking to people when I was a teenager. Now, I went back to Stockton back in 1992 because I was living in Reno, Nevada at the time, and certain economic things happened and I had to move. And I went back to Stockton, California, and I stayed there until 2006 when I moved back to Reno. Uh, I don't know why I went back to Reno. It's a crap town anyway. But anyway, all that time, I doubled my efforts into finding the information I needed to do what I needed to do and reverted back to my old school ways of doing things, and guess what? Found out a whole lot of information I didn't know anything about, which led me to ask more questions, which led to answers, which led to questions. You know, you get the point, right? I criticized some people that told me that I shouldn't be doing that, that, oh, that doesn't exist, and this is why that person said this, and this is why, you know, you know how it all works, right? Don't believe everything you hear is one of the adages that you are so familiar with. Well, let me tell you something. I like to listen to the analysis of other people because it gives me an aspect of where they're coming from so I know what to look for when I continue my research and investigation. Because they may have found something that I didn't. I may have seen something that somebody else didn't and I can show them. And, well, you know how that works as well, I hope. So I'm going to play you a clip from uh, this uh, guy by the name of Alex Exum. You can go check him out at uh, Twitter. Uh, Let me uh, give you his uh, Twitter uh, name. And uh, I will, I want you to be encouraged by what you hear, okay? I want you to be encouraged by what you hear. Now, let me go to Twitter and I'll give you where, you know, this Alex Exum is and that way you can go to his Twitter feed because I'm giving you everything that I have to show you where I'm coming from. Go to Twitter at Alex, A-L-E-X, Exum, E-X-U-M, at Alex Exum. Go check him out. Okay, the Exum experience on Spreaker.com, go check that out as well. But I'm going to play you a clip of what he talked about. It's a seven, almost a seven and a half minute clip. So bear with me, folks. I'm going to come back after that. And then I'm going to break down certain things that I know. And then we'll go from there. Here's Alex Exum from the Exum experience on Spreaker.com talking about uh, how Alex Jones's fans have turned on him. In a shocking turn of events, Alex Jones fans have turned on the conspiracy theorist like rabid dogs and are almost calling for his closure and shutdown of Infowars.com. I've never seen anything like it. I did a video yesterday after the fallout from Friday of Alex Jones apologizing for Pizzagate. Alex Jones retracts Pizzagate fake news, the end of Infowars, just asking a question, and people are really attacking him. And there's multiple videos you can see here in the sidebar. But some of the comments here, well, Jones, you've lost all credibility you had with me. Shame on you. You're fake. Thank you so much, Alex. Well, I'm sorry. This is to me. It's a little weird because my name's Alex. His name is Alex. But this is someone, the one comment I could see where they're actually defending him. And this is to me. Thank you, Alex. It's definitely a trap, but they're defending Alex Jones. And, you know, thank you for supporting Alex Jones. But the rest, almost unanimously, are either against Alex Jones, Pizzagate is real, I don't know why he's covering up, Alex dude, he's talking Alex Jones now, safe face and shut down InfoWars. 
I mean, and it goes on and on. The comments, I've got a lot of comments in 24 hours, and everyone's just saying, you know, oh, look, here's one. William Cooper exposed him. Yeah, I'm familiar with the work of William Cooper. And the comments go on. I'm not going to go through them all. I highlighted some of the more, um, I guess, the ones primarily against Jones. And, you know, I said to myself, now, look, people need to give this guy some credit. He's done a lot of great work. And the one time he's wrong, they want to nail him to the cross because we've never seen such a, a problematic issue for him and him having to come out and apologize. So I Googled because I wanted to see the actual clips and what he said about Pizzagate. I remember him talking about it reluctantly in some episodes of his show. But then I find this one. Now, I'm just going to play it briefly. We should cover Pizzagate. We have covered it. We are covering it. And all I know is, God help us, we're in the hands of pure evil. I love how the fake news is saying we're fake news. And they're specifically crapping themselves over Pizzagate. And their answer is to say it's all fake. No, WikiLeaks released this. This is in Leaked all the Pizzagate stuff. As a checkmate, instead of them using this against our government, they've recruited pedophiles in the government. You know, have my reporters covering Pizzagate. And, I, and I've mentioned it some. Pizzagate, as it's called is a rabbit hole that is horrifying to go down. Now, if you're a radio listener, this is a powerful video, but I've, I've had it reposted. This is on Infowars.com. Pizzagate is real. Okay, now I don't want to play the whole video. Alex Jones, Pizzagate is real. Hmm, interesting clip. Now, who came up with this clip? Well, shocking, Media Matters. And if you're not familiar with Media Matters, you're going to be very soon. Uh, funded by George Soros, absolute hit piece for conservative media, media, and recently, within the last at least, well, he's been under attack for many years, but at least the last couple of years, viciously going after Alex Jones. Now, it's a cleverly edited montage of him saying this. What I find very interesting was this was created on March the 24th. Are you trying to tell me that they compiled all of these clips and produced this pretty slick editing job it's pretty funny when you watch it because it's just over and over about pizzagate they had this on deck they had this thing ready to launch they had it in the chamber ready to fire because they knew that all this was coming down on jones this is a coordinated attack and folks you can go and look at media matters own website and when you click there where does it link you to one of their sites is their twitter which i did like click and look what we have here i mean it's just unbelievable now listen to this now this is separate Pinned to their page. Santa Claus at two and a half, and nobody had to tell me. I'm not bragging here, but you know, not everybody's family founded Texas. Again, I'm not bragging to say that things I've coined become popular parlance. I'm not bragging, but aren't those some big pecs? I'm not bragging when Jeff Bridges calls me. I knew Vladimir Putin listened on a routine basis. That's not bragging. I'm not bragging. I really have read thousands of books. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not some pseudo-intellectual here. I'm not bragging. You Okay. Now, it's obvious. Nobody needs to debate this. They are out to get Jones. Media Matter has all these clips, and it goes on and on and on. You can go to their Google page, I mean, their Twitter page, rather, and you'll see some of the posts that they've done over the past couple of months, recently really ratcheting it up against InfoWars. And you go to their Media Matters page, and oh, look, top headline, Alex Jones. Folks, obviously, they had this video in the can. They knew this apology was coming. They had a lawsuit probably already filed and they knew that Alex was going to have to retract all this and they had this video launched and ready to go to take down Alex Jones. Now look, going back to my video here, I even said in my own video, I'm not a massive fan of Jones and I've done some videos contradicting some of the stuff that he's done in the past. I don't agree with everything he says, but I do like his show. He's very entertaining and Alex Jones isn't here to save the world. All of these people attacking him. Look, I get that you don't like that you're seeing this bizarre retraction and you thought it was real. You're not sure. Is it? Who knows? Look, Jones isn't the barometer of truth. Go figure it out yourself. Don't crucify this guy just because he made a mistake. We've all made mistakes. How many times has CNN, Fox, MSNBC, your local news department made a massive mistake? Even your local paper. I've seen some whoppers of a lie in my local paper out here. Several of them. And they, they, they don't retract anything. And if they do, it's in the back of the paper and nobody sees it. What I'm getting at is everybody, like I said at the top of the show, has turned on Jones like a rabid dog. You people are so easily manipulated. They He comes out with one retraction. I, I mean, the comments are ridiculous. But they've got this Pizzagate is real thing. 
we're locked and ready to fire. And then all I see, and look, I mean, just look. All of these videos are Jones is, you know, he's a liar, he's a sneak, he's a fraud, he's a this, he's a that. You don't think Media Matters had anything to do with it? You don't think all these videos and hit pieces that they're constantly putting out is swaying public opinion? Of course it is. Now, is Pizzagate real? I don't know. I've had my own reservations about this whole thing because I've said this in the beginning. I, th- I thought it was a trap. This guy, he got, go look, at, watch my last video I did yesterday, but I think he was set up. They dangled the little worm out in front of InfoWars and like a guppy, they bit. And I remember Jones was on the fence about reporting it. He was, it, look, I don't care what that video montage said. They're not including the clips where he was like, look, I don't know what's going on with PTG. He said that many, many times, but his reporters were pushing it. And then this is the fallout. I mean, just, I mean, these are, I didn't even read, I didn't read some of the other comments with the profanity in them. I didn't go through them all. But folks, Wow. I'd hate to have you on my team. Fans turned on Jones like rabid dogs. We'll be very interested to hear his uh, show today and see how he addresses this. Thanks for listening. Bye. That was Alex Exum. You can find him at Alex Exum Experience or and uh, on Twitter. Um, I'm going to say this. Shut up. That's all you got to do. That's, I mean, you know, when I was in school, when I was, you know, bouncing around between classes, I would listen to other people and listen to conversations and be part of conversations and reply when I had to. But, and in class, I would just sit there and open my ears and learn. And everything that was there was all, I'll make it an analogy. All the information's on the table. Some of it's wrong some of its complete lies some of it you have to dig through all of that to get through to get to the truth the facts be accurate and all that and if you're just going to sit there and bash someone and say he has no balls or he doesn't have a backbone or whatever without ever without ever doing the research behind it and going down that 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 I'm going to say <laughs> the road to accuracy, if you're not going to spend that time looking behind the scenes and examining all of this, then you, you need to rethink your position in the independent media. I uh, say this a lot, mama didn't raise no fool and grandma taught me better. And that's exactly what it is because that's accurate and factual. My mom told me never talk about things I don't know anything about. And my grandmother taught me how to, (laughs) let's just put it this way, find the details. Okay? So I'm just going to lay it out there and let you decide for yourself what you want to believe. Because you have your own perspective on this. And frankly, that's all I can say about that. All I can say is, You better know what you're talking about before you become presumptuous in thinking that I don't know what I'm doing, or anyone else for that matter. And if you do your research, you'll know where all of these hit pieces and all of these things are coming from. So again... Show me the canceled checks and the electronic funds transfer into Jones's bank from uh, from uh, the government and from other organizations that when you claim that he is controlled opposition. He isn't, therefore, you're wrong. Now, I, as far as I know at this point on the 26th of March 2017, because you haven't shown me anything else to contradict that or to counter those claims I make. I can back up damn near everything I say. Do you want to really challenge me? I don't think so. (laughs) All right. So anyway, coming down to the bottom of the hour, folks, I want to reiterate several things. First of all, I didn't, uh, you know, I I wasn't going to do a podcast today, but because of the replies i got on certain a certain 
post on Facebook. I thought I should clear it up and and make my presence known. I just, I, I, I can't stand someone who continues to look at myself, look at Brian Lang, look at Nick Tucker, look at Ashley Jones, look at Deb Jordan, look at Pete Santilli, look at, you know, Robert Bruce, look at Alex Jones, look at uh, Michael Savage, and say they're full of bull crap. I don't like it. So let me turn the tables. You think I'm full of bull crap? All I can say is there's a empty table there looking for your information. I suggest you either put up or shut up. Well, look at this video. Look at this. Just, uh, you know, and this video and that. Videos can be manipulated if you just heard Alex Exum talk about who put those hit pieces together against Alex Jones. So I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm done. I'm done addressing this. I'm done. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. Let's put it this way. You want to play baseball? You go right ahead. You get on that team. You go on the, you go on the, you go in the uh, stadium. You play the ball. Guess where I'm going to be? I'm going to be outside of the stadium because. <laughs> It's quiet. There's not a whole lot of people. There's I can at least concentrate on what I'm doing. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> I'm going to be talking to the people at the tailgate parties. <laughs> you know? Anyway, that's just an analogy. A metaphor. A whatever you want to call it. But I really think that people need to Step back. Stop reacting so quickly and being so presumptuous as to think that they know more than I do. That they think they know more than Alex Jones. That they think they know more than anybody else. Because I, I, I want to make this suggestion and I'm going to make this perfectly clear. I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. I'd be bored because there wouldn't be anything else to learn. And you know what? I'm not wrong, per se, quote unquote. I'm not wrong. I just may have overlooked something, and it doesn't necessarily mean I'm wrong. It just means that I've overlooked something. I'll go back and take a look at it. I've actually, about 90 to 95% of everything that everybody has ever told me and shown me and, you know, gave me clips of this and that and showed me this document and that document and gave me PDFs and all that stuff, I already know and have known for many, many years. Give me something new. This is why when I was going to high school, nobody could ever deal with the fact that I was, in the ninth grade, I was doing 12th grade math and college level English. No one could ever put me at a, you know, to, to bump me up a grade or two. They couldn't because they did not know how at the time. When I graduated high school a year, uh, you know, uh, one year after I graduated high school, they created that whole system. So they didn't know how to deal with people like me, you know? So I just, you know, <clears throat> did enough to get my credit to get the hell out of school. Oh, I could have pulled A's. I could have pulled B's. I could have been, you know, college material. I did go to college for a little bit, for about a week. But, <laughs> you know. So, no. I, I just, I, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not, I'm not bragging. I'm just sending you and giving you and, and showing you the information that I have. And telling you exactly what I'm seeing that I don't know it all because I don't want to know it all. I'd be bored. And I may have overlooked something. And if I did, I go back and look at it again. No big deal. Hell, I've gone back 20 years looking at the information that I got back then. And I'm going, wow, has it matched up with what today, what's happening today? Yeah, pretty much. 20 years ago, uh, Bill Clinton was in office, if you don't know. Um, But yeah, 
So uh, it's just take it for what it is. Okay? Take it for what it is. Do with it what you want. And, uh, you know, say what you want to say. Because I, gar- I, I, I can almost give you this guarantee that about 70, 60 to 70% of what you're going to say is not even going to be investigated. You're not, you're not going to, you're not going to research it enough to give all the information in an accurate and factual manner because about 60 to 70% of what you gather is going to be bull crap because it's the carrot in front of the horse. And once you start snapping at that carrot, you're going to move in the direction they want you to go. Understand? It's called propaganda, folks. It's called It's called overwhelm the system with information. George Soros's organizations including Media Matters has done that for the for the propagandist media we call mainstream media. They put it out there, they continue, they continue to drop it in your lap and shove it in your head and you begin to believe it when it's all bull crap. So this is what I'm saying. Step back, take a look at it, shut up for a little while and stop being so damn presumptuous about somebody else who you don't even know. Okay? That, that's all I'm saying on that part. And if you want to bash somebody, but you, you better have the information in front of you to be as accurate and factual as it is to bash somebody to the point at which people are bashing Alex Jones. Oh, he'll get through this. He's been around for over 20 years. I think he's had, this is just a minor blip on his radar. Okay. Seriously. I, I I don't always agree with everything Alex Jones does, but, uh, you know, hey, or says or, or anything like that. But let me tell you something. If, if there's something he says that, <clears throat> excuse me, if there's something he says that makes me question what he's saying, I go take a look. I go examine it. I go down the rabbit hole (laughs) and I go check it out. Okay. I passed my break, but uh, don't worry. I'm going (laughs) to, I'm going to, I'm going to take it anyway. So folks, uh, be back in uh, about uh, a minute and a half, about a minute 23. So don't go away. This is American Liberty Radio Network, American Liberty Radio. Dot. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and it was good. Then God created man, and it wasn't bad. But the masses were asses. They were lost. They had no guidance. So God sat and thought about it, and he created the Exum Experience. And God sent forth Alex to entertain the people of Israel, the Canaanites, the Palestinians, and the douchebags. And Alex led his flock through the dark, cold, rugged terrain of Long Beach Radio. He conquered the Mons. He cast down the elderly and banished the Falburn. And it was good. The Exum Experience. It's not just a show. It's a religious experience. Join me live Friday at 5, only at alexexum.com. There's a show that's not afraid to ask the questions no one else will ask. Not afraid to say what no one else will say. Friday nights at 7 p.m. Listen to Restricted Airspace with Tina Marie. Where no topic is off limits. Conspiracy theories. Paranormal activities. Hoaxes. The unexplained. It's what we talk about. Question everything. Trust no one. Restricted Airspace with Tina Marie. Friday at 7 p.m. On the KCOR Digital Radio Network out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom-killing business. I want you to get up right now and go to the window 
open it and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Hey folks, welcome back. This is American Liberty Radio Network. This is Wayne S. Pierce, 26th of March, 2017. Oh, goodness gracious sakes alive. What are we... <laughs> um, what are we doing? No, serious. Uh, what, what, what the heck are we doing? Because, uh, yeah, um... Uh, it's just, uh, here we are, we're looking at this information, we're looking at what is there, we're examining things that people have said, uh, okay, <laughs> we, we are looking at this, and we're saying, what's going on, okay, I mean, without ever, without ever, doing any additional research on it okay i just don't i i don't get it i i I just don't get it so okay let me go off in uh to this direction and uh uh give you this i i want to make sure that that you get the information um I want to make sure that you get the information correct and as accurate as I am receiving it. So, uh, so let me let me go here. Let me. I'm I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to Infowars.com, and I'm going to talk about some articles there. Okay. All right. So. I also want to give you my analysis of some of these articles, such as, such as this. Mind Control, Hive and Individual, Dr. Nick Begich reveals how the elite purposely dumb down and control populations. That dovetails right into what I was talking about before the break. Right? So, this is going up on American Liberty Radio Podcasts. On Facebook, I want to, uh, it's a video, so there's really no article to it, so you might want to, you might want to check that out. I want to mention something while I look for some more information here. Steve Bachanik, neocons want to destroy America. Also find out why Gorsuch is dangerous and can't be trusted. Okay. This is uh, where I live. Everybody is in support of Gorsuch for Supreme Court. Um, Steve Bachanik, he's a whistleblower. He's a, uh, he's former, uh, NSA or, you know, former, you know, intelligence in uh, the military, wrote a lot of books, helped other people write a lot of books, and it's up on American Liberty Radio Podcasts, and there you go. So, excuse me, a lot of coffee. I just cannot 
and, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to put this out here, I'm going to lay this out at your feet. That if you don't know what is going on, you're blind. If you don't know what is going on, what is happening out in front of your face, you are blind. Or you just don't give a crap and you want to ignore it all. Well, I don't have any sympathy for you when the bad things start happening to you and you're sitting there questioning as to, why is this happening to me? Because you didn't pay attention. So, I'm going to lay this out on the table. You need to push your chair away from the table, get up, go grab some water, some wine, whatever your favorite libation is, take a walk outside, take a breath of fresh air, and spend some time getting to know yourself. Because as far as I am concerned... When you have a visceral, emotional reaction to something, as people have had towards Alex Jones in these last few days, it kind of makes me question your integrity and your ability to gather the information needed to make the most accurate analysis that you can and disseminating that out to other people kind of makes me question everything that you do, in other words. Now, again, I don't know everything. I don't want to know everything. I'd be bored because there wouldn't be anything else to learn. And I may have overlooked something. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm wrong. It just means that I may have overlooked something. So as far as I'm concerned, all these people bashing Alex Jones and have been for the past several years need to shove a cork in it because you guys don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I am bashing my own independent colleagues in, in, in the alternative media. There are people out there who are saying they're aware and awake, and this is why I'm, quote-unquote, you're seeing it as if I'm bashing these people, but I'm really not. I'm criticizing their way of doing things. So call it whatever you want. I don't know. Slap a name on there that you can make up. I don't care. But when you look at these people, when you examine what they're saying, when you and, and you look at some of these groups, you know, that you can find on Spreaker, Blog Talk, Talk Shoe, you can find them all over the place. Examine who they are and examine what they're doing. Examine where they're getting the information. And guess what? Most of them are controlled opposition. Somebody once said that to me today. Well, Alex Jones is controlled opposition. Really? Show me the canceled checks. Show me the electronic funds transfer show me all of the documents that you have proving that well you can just go to no 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 i'm calling your bluff put the information on the table and be done with it that's all you got to do that's all you got to do that's all you have to do i have in this poker game of intellect, I have I have put my money out on the table. I have put the thing that you said, okay, I raise you this and I raise you that and I, this. And now I'm calling you. I've put my cards out on the table. There they are. I've told you and you see it. There it is. And... You're not going to? Hmm. Do you want me to play into your bluff? Because that ain't going to happen. Okay? I've told you what to do to help you understand how to bring that information forward. 
I don't see you doing it because I don't think you can. I don't think that you can fly to Washington, D.C., find all those insiders up there and talk to them personally. I don't think you can dig enough down that rabbit hole to find the information that you claim is negative towards Alex Jones. Or positive. Either way, hey, both sides have a valid reason for existing. So therefore, (laughs) put this stuff on the table. I've done it. I mean, and I'm telling you straight up, hey, I don't know everything. There's what I've got so far. I'm still looking. Can't do that. There's the door. Bye. Have a nice day. I just don't, I don't get it. But anyway, yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm done trying to say anything to you people who say you're aware and awake and and you're you know i i just i don't know i don't know i i'm just i'm i'm just fully at my crossroads here with you people who say you're aware and awake Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the high road, which means I'm going to continue doing what I do, continue presenting what I present, continue doing what I can with what I have and with what I find. And I'm going to continue talking about what's behind the curtain and who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles. I'm going to continue talking about everything that I can that I find and all of that. And I'm going to continue to do it because I can. That's just the way it is. Now, people can question me all they want. If you want answers, I'll give them to you. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. It's as simple as that, folks. There's no gray area in this. It's cut or dry. It's black or white. It's blue or green. It's whatever color you want to use. I'm colorblind, so, you know, what the hell? (laughs) So it doesn't really matter to me. It's either I've got the information, I'm going to share it with you. So far, this is what I have, and this is what I want to talk about. Or I don't know enough about it to talk about it. Uh, It's pretty cut and dry, folks. And in my book, one plus one still equals two. So I think, uh, yeah, think about it that way. So when you uh, want to bash uh, Alex Jones, you go right ahead and do so. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> I just look at the information... And I have to ask, and, 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 and I do this because it's more of a question about myself than it is, or to myself, than it is to anybody else. And I have to ask, at what point do you realize, or do you accept, you are completely wrong? And and when you do that, do you have the ability to, number one, admit to it, and number two, apologize and make amends? This is what Alex Jones has done. He reluctantly wanted to talk about it. I remember, I mean, if you listen to Alex Exum uh, uh, close to the bottom of the last uh, segment, yeah, I remember Alex Jones not wanting to talk about this because he thought there was something fishy about it. And then, of course, a few days later, he gets information, and it's, yes, the, as I say, the carrot before the horse. And he bit. The controlled opposition are people like George Soros and his organizations, Media Matters, all of that. 
people like that. That's the controlled opposition to the peace, freedom, liberty, and security this nation should have. And the information that is out there proving once and for all our government is corrupt. That is the controlled opposition. The propagandist media we call mainstream media, the MSNBCs, the Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS, all of That's the controlled opposition. You people need to understand this. Open your freaking eyes and look at what's out there. And stop saying, well, I'm aware of everything and I've done it, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to hear that. Show me. Put the stuff on the table. I'm tired of you sitting there making claims against Alex Jones, Michael Savage, anybody else. Without having, you're just going to sit there with your arms folded across your chest and say, yeah, I know, and I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Yes, you do. You have to prove it to yourself, jackass. If you make a claim, and I'll make it very simple for you. If you make a claim that 2 plus 2 is 4, do you not go to the chalkboard and put the information up on the board? Because that's what your teacher told you to do in high school, wasn't it? Or in junior high? Show your work. A, prove yourself right. B, show your work. You can't do that. There's a door. Bye. Have a nice day. Okay? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm done. Take your your so-called awareness and expand it a little more. Take your awareness and take it outside and look at the grand scheme of things. I'm going to be on Nick Tucker, Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. I'm going to be on his podcast on April 5th, and we're going to talk about, and the title of his show is, Are We Living in a Simulation? That's some deep thinking right there. But I would suggest to uh, a few people that have posted on Facebook, I would suggest that you stop the crazy train of inconsistencies that you have and go and do your homework. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I didn't get to a whole lot of articles today, so I may get into overdrive. I'm not sure. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) But I do know this. I got to take a break. I'll be back. This is American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.com and American Liberty Radio on Spreaker.com. Smashing through the lies of the mainstream media. Tearing down the walls of misinformation. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations. A new world order. Shattering the foundations of the new world order. To bring China into the creation of a new world order. The truth, the facts, no bullshit. In this new world, such dangerous currents have swept along faster than our efforts to contain them. And that is why we cannot afford to be divided. The American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. For more information, go to AmericanLibertyRadio.com or email them at AmericanLibertyRadio at USA.com.
Hey folks, how you doing? Had to take a little break there. Now, let me... I, I can go as long as I want, but I like to stay consistent with the length of the show. But uh, yeah, I I will uh, go a little bit over. Uh, John Rappaport talks about, uh, he breaks down how the Rockefellers have been trying to establish a global health care system to achieve population control. Yeah, there you go. Rockefeller's healthcare system and their road to population con- uh, control, the plan to eliminate millions of humans, has been written about for decades. I'll just leave it right there, folks. It's on American Liberty Radio Podcast. I don't know, and and when I tell you I don't know, I, I'll tell you I don't know. <laughs> it's just what it is. Um, Google and social media companies could be prosecuted if they show extremist video. Quote, the ball is now in their court. We will see how they respond. What's that all about, you say? London Telegraph, 25th of March, 2017. Google, Facebook, and other internet companies could be prosecuted if they do not stop extremist videos from being seen on their websites by people in Britain. The Telegraph, Daily Telegraph can disclose. Ministers are considering a new law which would mean Google, which owns YouTube and other social media sites like Facebook and Twitter, can be prosecuted if they allow such videos to be disseminated. Theresa May, the Prime Minister, made clear her displeasure at internet companies that publish extremist content on Friday saying the ball is in their court, unquote, over taking action. Google publicly apologized this week after the growing scandal over extremist videos on YouTube led to a series of companies pulling their adverts from the internet giant. Yeah, you hit them in their pocketbook, man. Google, which owns the video sharing website YouTube and other social media sites, have agreed have an agreement to take down extremist video or ex- extremist content within 24 hours when they are alerted to it. But ministers are worried that this still allows the videos to be viewed thousands of times before they can be taken down. Folks, I'm going to put that on American Liberty Radio podcasts on, on Facebook and uh, let you see that for what it is. There's more. It's the daily... Uh, what is it here? It's the uh, telegraph.co.uk. So I'm going to put that. Uh, that was on Infowars.com, but I'm going to put the original article from uh, the Telegraph up there uh, on American Liberty Radio podcast for you to take a gander at. So anyway, folks, at the top of the hour, I'm going to take an extended break because, yes, I am going to go into overdrive. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, and I'm going to say this right now, and I'm going to make this very clear. Whether you like it or not, whether you have a particular perspective of something or not, chances are you're going to have people who are going to be in complete contention to what you believe. And they are going to react presumptively and viscerally and emotionally to anything you say. And on that note, folks, let me take a break. It's going to be about six and a half minutes, you know, stick around. I'm going to be back after that. So, you know, I got some other uh, things to talk about. So uh, I will catch you in a bit. This is American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.com. I shall return right after this. Parts of this program have been pre-recorded for this particular podcast. The views and opinions expressed on this show are those of the host. He was the nation's youngest Eagle Scout at the age of 13, and twice journeyed to Asia before the advent of commercial flight. He attended America's first class on nuclear physics and was a pioneer at the dawn of American aviation. He led expeditions into then remote islands as a member of the famed Explorers Club. 
and was a giant in the golden age of pulp fiction. He was a master mariner, licensed to captain vessels on any ocean, and a United States naval officer who commanded corvettes during World War II. His landmark work on the human mind wrote bestseller lists for 100 consecutive weeks. And he's the most published and translated author of all time. He is L. Ron Hubbard, founder of Scientology. For those that know me, that have known me, it would seem that not too many people actually know me. What I've gone through, the life I've lived, and how I grew up only pushed me into getting to know myself much better than anyone else would ever know me. Now I'm at a point where it doesn't matter to me what people actually know or think about me. How are things for me now? Much better, but that doesn't stop me from continuing to find out more about myself. Or cause me to want to stop learning. Whether you want to believe it or not, L. Ron Hubbard was right. Regardless of your feelings or understanding, those that refuse to accept his findings and his breakthroughs of the human psyche and the science of the mind are refusing to accept one's self, their true unlimited existence, according to the theories and concepts based upon the research of L. Ron Hubbard. What I have found in my research of L. Ron Hubbard is both good and bad. I will not focus on the bad, that's for others to do. Their speculations and manufactured information is on them, but I'm getting ahead of myself. For the most part, what I have found is that mostly everything I know about myself came from working through various issues. When I came across Dianetics and Scientology and researched and studied each of them, I found that most of the things they described as being a problem for an individual were what I was dealing with. If it wasn't for Dianetics and Scientology and my subsequent involvement with them, I have no idea where I would be today. All in all, the experiences I've had with Dianetics and Scientology were very positive. I will say nothing bad about them. The information that L. Ron Hubbard came up with works if you choose to apply it. At this stage of my life, I can say that my studies in various religions and cultures, including studying Scientology, are not only ongoing, but very insightful. Regardless of what people think of Scientology or L. Ron Hubbard, I can say for myself that everything I know is very positive and very good. For those that refuse to discuss the subject or who have a contradictory view of what I've said should, at the very least, go and talk with someone directly involved with the Church of Scientology and get the information you want instead of listening to people who hold grudges and have nothing but bad things to say. You determine your future with the information you acquire. What you see and hear will determine your present and future reality. Focus on yourself, not on what others say. Be mindful of the moment you are in right now, not the moment someone else designs for you. Your future depends on you doing something about it. There are three factors in Scientology which are of the utmost importance in handling life. These three factors help you find answers to questions such as, how do I improve relationships? How can I explain my ideas to people? How do I handle my work better? We call these three factors in Scientology the ARC Triangle. ARC is a word made from the initial letters of affinity, reality, and communication. By affinity, we mean emotional response. We mean the feeling of affection or lack of it. By reality, we mean the solid objects, the real things of life, the things which we agree are real. By communication, we mean an interchange of ideas between people. These three terms are interdependent one upon the other, and when one drops, the other two drop also. Can you remember a person who pushed you away when you felt affectionate? What was your immediate reaction to them? Were you in agreement with what they did? Did you feel like communicating more or less? Can you see how one of these points lowering affected the others? Well, reversely, when one rises, the other two rise also. It is only necessary to raise one corner of this triangle to raise the other two. 
affinity and reality exist to further communication, and altogether, these form understanding. This triangle is the keystone of living associations. It is the common denominator of all life activities. Its use means a greater understanding of life itself. Hello, everybody. This is Brian. Hello, everybody. This is Brian Lang with Live the Truth Radio and TV. You're listening to Wayne S. Pierce Boston. with American no Liberty Radio. Intended. Hello, folks. This is American Liberty Radio Network, 26th of March, 2017. Yes, and only I can interrupt my intros <laughs> with Brian Lang at Live Truth Radio. Uh, the opinions I express are my own, no one else's, and if someone disagrees with me, put the crap on the table so we can talk about it. That's basically what I'm saying, folks. So, hey, if you're here on the 26th of uh, March 2017, that's great, wonderful, fantastic. I appreciate it. Go check out Mr. Nick Tucker over at Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker at distortedreality.podbean.com or right here on American Liberty Radio Network. Hey, if you're, uh, let me also do this as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I got a little something going on in my throat there sorry uh if you are an independent artist independent filmmaker independent author and go check out a friend of mine named mr tom slick over at radio rock 92.6 the blitz yes he plays all the independent hits from around the world everywhere around the world and yes i do mean that because he's got a lot of artists independent artists uh that he uh plays their music uh from at radio rock 92.6 the blitz hey if you got any questions go check it out at his website at uh 926 the blitz dot rocks go check it out man 926 the blitz dot rocks check out mr tom slick in the morning brew monday through uh friday at <clears throat> um check it out yes i forgot the times i'm sorry <clears throat> excuse me that's 926 the blitz dot rocks check it out thank you very much folks let's move on shall we <laughs> let's let's go on here Okay, see, somebody, I was just checking out uh, some of the uh, notifications on Facebook from the post I was talking about earlier. My God, this person is has absolutely no idea what the hell they're talking about. Here, let me give you uh, some information here. I'm not going to give the guy's name, but uh, <sighs> it's about the Pizzagate apology of Alex Jones and blah de blah de blah de blah and all of that, and this guy, this person, this guy, it's a male, this guy posted a reply to to something, uh, and he put up a Dr. Phil episode, you know, <laughs> so that right there just shoots all the credibility right out the freaking door with me. The moment Dr. Phil had more balls than the world's famous conspiracy uh, conspiracist, and he, this person is, that posted this is talking about Alex Jones. So, so <clears throat> this person absolutely does not do any of their homework, does not look into anything, does not dig deeper, 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 deeper into everything, even to even to prove to themselves it's a bunch of crap you look for the truth and even if you don't find the truth and it's all lies you have to exp have to express to yourself the uh, satisfaction of finding the information that is correct and accurate do you not i'm just throwing it out there this person says that uh, Alex uh, is controlled opposition. He gives you a little loony mixed with a little truth. No, that's the mainstream media idiot. I'm about ready to name names here because this person is just totally an, uh, an ass. Okay. <sighs> Excuse me. This throat thing is driving me nuts. 
But anyway, yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm just going to leave it right there. Okay, I'm I'm just going to, you know, I I'm I'm not going to deal with any more bull crap from that post. As a matter of fact, I'm it's a it's a reply to someone else. So I can't really delete this person or block this person cuz they're not on my friends list. So I may just have to unfriend the uh, the person that uh, originally put the post up there. I, I'm I'm going to probably have to do that, and I don't like doing that because the person that originally made the post just with one little sentence of Alex Jones has no balls, that's what they put. <clears throat> I like this person. I've interviewed this person. I don't want to unfriend them, but I may have no choice because the person replying to everything that I've put is a total douchebag. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know, folks. But anyway, let's move on. I'll give you some uh, information here. And since I do go to Infowars.com, let's go over to uh, RT.com and look at what Russia is talking about. Yes, Russian owns, uh, not owns, but funds uh, RT.com. One person killed and, a do- and over a dozen injured in U.S. nightclub shooting. Police, there's video. <sighs> Hundreds detained as opposition activists hold protests in several Russian cities. There's uh, photos and videos of that. No place to hide. That's in quotes. UK Home Secretary urges end to WhatsApp encryption after London attack. Um, Also, uh, in quotes, we reached our limits. Greece to stop taking back refugees. Migration minister has announced. Um, Yeah. So there you go. That's just at the top of RT.com. All right. That's just right there. All right. Um, <clears throat> let me go, you know, scroll on down here. Putin's red line in Syria is not an invitation for Israel to play Russian roulette with Assad. Let's take a look at that one. RT.com down about the middle of the page. Uh, Martin J is an award winning British journalist now based in Beirut who works on a freelance basis for a number of respected British newspapers as well as previously Al Jazeera and Deutsche Welle TV. Before Lebanon, he has worked in Africa and Europe for CNN, Euronews, CNBC, BBC, uh, Sunday Times, and Reuters. And follow him on Twitter at Martin R J. He writes Putin's red line in Syria. Is not an invitation for Israel to play Russian roulette with Assad. Well, that's, I, I would have to say that that's correct in that. Okay. So let me read this. And I'll put this up on the uh, Facebook page. What is Israel's real role in the ro- uh, war in Syria? Can we really believe that it doesn't want to get involved in the conflict? And how much longer can Israel be Washington's strongman in the region while sustaining good relationships with Russia. A minor incident took place last week in Syria, which few in Washington and London ever noticed, but which drew the attention of uh, geopolitical nerds who observed the daily developments in Damascus. Israel conducted an air attack on what it claims was a movement of Hezbollah missiles, In itself, it was hardly remarkable and has happened in the past. In fact, Israel's attack has generally been on Hezbollah commanders or the transportation of ordnance. What made this attack remarkable was the response of Syrian President Bashar Assad. Not only did he launch a ballistic missile into Israel, but quickly stated to the media that no more such attacks would be tolerated. The last time, in fact, that Assad issued such stern warnings to Israel was over the Golan Heights in 2013 when he threatened the Israelis with the use of Russian weapons. But now, the threat is wider and throws into question both how far Russia will go in supporting Assad, but also to what extent Israel is prepared to risk ruining its own relations with Moscow. Isn't that... Wonderful. So let me put that on uh, American Liberty Radio Podcast. 
on uh, Facebook, because there's more to it, folks. Go check this out. So, okay, let's go to uh, Breitbart. Dot com. Check it out. I don't always go to Infowars.com, but they're, you know, they're there. Um, yeah. Media refused to blame anti-Trump protesters for violence at rallies. Yeah, because the propagandist media wants to sensationalize all the negative so that you won't look at the conservative and believe them. You know what I'm saying? So there you go. Shooting in Cincinnati nightclub kills one, injures dozen, dozens. Uh, Imam calls for Jews to be killed in a Canada mosque. Sanders admits Obamacare deductibles premiums too high. Well, duh. Okay, California, worst state in the nation for infrastructure spending, of course. Sunday city election tests Merkel's ruling conservatives. Uber suspend self-driving car program after Arizona crash. (sighs) French voters rejecting political corruption and graft. Hours after President tweets watcher show, after hours after, I mean, excuse me, hours after President tweets watcher show, Judge Jeanine declares, quote, Paul Ryan needs to step down, unquote. Trump, after Obamacare explodes, will put together, quote, a great health plan for the people, unquote. Yeah, how are they going to do that? Just wondering. I'm wondering. How are they going to do that? Kind of curious. They go low. Anti-Trump protesters turn violent at rally for president. Of course they do, because they're commies. They're communists. They're democratic socialists. They're they're far left liberal loons that have absolutely no idea who's paying for what they would claim their free stuff. They want to be on the dole. They want to be on the dole. Period. Well, let me just go there and give you this article. A peaceful march to support President Trump was well as well as veterans, law enforcement, and first responders was briefly interrupted by a dozen or so anti-Trump protesters Saturday in Huntington Beach, California. Police arrested four people after they allegedly used pepper spray on the marchers during the peaceful uh, procession attended by about 3,000 on the beach in Orange County. According to the Los Angeles Times, the dozen or so counter-demonstrators, including one who wore a patch that said, "...only you can resist racist liars," are refused to identify, all refuse to identify themselves, but one claimed that the group only used pepper spray after they were shoved and punched by their rivals, unquote. Video evidence appears to indicate otherwise. According to the organizers, the Make America Great Again March, the event was designed to show, quote, we love our country and we want to show gratitude to the men and women who put their lives on a line every day, unquote. Organizers are collecting donations, were collecting donations during the event to benefit homeless veterans. Captain Kevin Pearsall of California State Parks told LA Times that six people were originally detained, but only four were arrested. He said three men were arrested on suspicious of suspicion of illegal use of a taser, and one woman was arrested on suspicion of assault and battery. None of their names were immediately released. Purcell um, said all of those arrested were counter-demonstrators. This is going up on the American Liberty Radio podcast on Facebook. I'm going to say this one more time. These people, these anti-Trumpers, these, these, uh, that is your controlled opposition, folks, right there. Start looking at who's funding them. Have you seen these anti-Trump protesters out at the rallies uh, for President Trump? <clears throat> and you see these fancy, they look like brand new signs, like they picked up that morning and went to this rally. Did you know that most of them are bust into these places? Did you know that? Who's paying these people to be there? Okay? Who, who's, who's paying them to be there? Okay? Go look that up. 
Ian Hanchent, Hanchet, is that a, I'm sorry, Ian, for butchering your name, uh, wrote for Breitbart.com, Louise Mensch, quote, America first, unquote, is, quote, a Nazi slogan being pushed by Russia, unquote. On Friday's broadcast of HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, journalist and former conservative member of the UK Parliament, Louise Mensch, stated that the Slogan America First is a Nazi slogan being pushed by Russia, quote, who are quite literally attacking not only America, but the whole of the West, unquote. Mensch said, quote, America First is a Russian slogan. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just, um, I was going to repeat myself there, so I had to stop. She goes on to say, every country in Europe is undergoing these bots, the troll army. And what are we doing about it? Nothing. Let me put that on there because, you know, that's just pretty vague. There's a video, actually, of this. So I'll put this on American Liberty Radio uh, podcast on uh, on Facebook. Now, why do I use Facebook if they're, you know, so, you know, they are what they are? Uh, because it's like use the enemy's tools against them, basically. <laughs> you know, Iran sanctions 15 U.S. companies for supporting Israel. Yeah, yeah, like we need to really be in Iran for any reason whatsoever. Uh, Poll, 35% want to live in sanctuary cities. Yeah, well, they can pack their crap and get the hell out of the country. Bye. President looks to NASA's future Hubble history in weekly address. Uh, Let's see. Let's go down here. Eric Bowling says, I hate what Paul Ryan did to the president. Well, yeah, so do a lot of people. Uh, Mark Levin, Trump's comments on health care bill failure, quote, were actually outstanding, unquote. Mark Levin, if you don't know about him, go look him up. Mark Levin, okay. <clears throat> Speaker Ryan crippled, replacement chatter erupts on the Hill. Polls, GOP legislature dodged 2018 headache. It says, yeah, let, yeah. Can, uh, Canada. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Canada's largest school system cancels trip to the U.S., fearful of travel ban. Delling poll. Environmentalists aren't just wrong. They're loathsome and evil, too. Oh, boy. There's going to be a huge, huge thing about uh, I got coming up with Nick Tucker. I'm going to talk about the environmentalists and their their hands in a lot of things and who's funding them so we're going to talk uh, nick tucker and i are going to talk about that too as well uh but i'll let you read this it's going to be on american liberty radio podcasts on facebook yeah we're gonna we're gonna come up with a show about uh the environmentalists who actually uh yeah we're we're gonna get into the whole detail as to who these people really are okay I, I'm not. I, I'm not kidding you. These 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 people just absolutely are incredibly evil, folks. I'm not. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I'm not. It's just. Oh my god. I just. I don't know, folks. I mean, you can say whatever it is you want to say. You can do whatever it is you want to do. But until you open the door and and walk into that you know, into that room with all that cacophony going on and start separating the truth from the lies and the and the misinformation from the disinformation and, and all of that. When you just go in there with your, uh, you know, with yourself and you look and you examine and you're never going to know until you go and do what needs to be done to find the truth accurately and factually it's it's never going to happen folks you're never going to get the full story the full truth unless you yourself go out and find it for you okay for instance under world news under infowars there will be those who perish in the next crisis and those quote who survive in underground luxury unquote uh, the haves and haves not the ha- the haves and have nots of the next gritty era of a- uh, of aftermath will be those who have the means to survive when the system has failed and those who do not. I'm going since I read that I'm going to put that on the American Liberty Radio podcasts on Facebook. I I I I I I, 
Oh, it's all a conspiracy theory. Oh, it's all this. Oh, it's all that. Oh. Pope Francis says the EU risks dying. The pontiff called for greater European solidarity as a, quote, antidote to modern form of populism. Let me say that again. The pontiff called for greater European solidarity as a, quote, antidote to modern forms of populism, unquote. In other words, he wants communism, pretty much. Russia reserves right to meet any French politician it wants to. Putin to Lee Pin. Putin underlined the necessity to unite against terrorism, citing common threats for both Russia and France. So, you know, there's an olive leaf right there, man. There's an olive branch right there. There it is going to France. Hey, let's sit down. Let's discuss this stuff. See, Putin ain't stupid. <laughs> okay. He, he doesn't want to spend money going after these people if he doesn't have to. You know what I mean? Egypt's toppled President Mubarak freed after six-year detention. The 88-year-old was cleared of uh, final murder charges against him. So there you go. That's one aspect. We went in and toppled all this. uh, You know, not we, not you and I, but uh, the military-industrial complex of Europe and the U.S. went in and did this through their little minions and created chaos over there to uh, install a puppet government. Okay. Do I have proof of that? Oh, my God, it's all over the place. How about go looking it up yourself? Because I can list it all here, but it'll take me another hour. Putin meets with Le Pen at Kremlin, vows not to interfere in election. What's that imply, folks? Yeah, Russian leader acknowledged Le Pen as fast-growing force. Yeah, three million migrants waiting to cross into Greece, says EU Commissioner, uh, it's Greek to me, thousands of migrants are already bottlenecked. Police repeatedly deported MS-13 gang member, sexually assaulted two-year-old girl. Officer says alleged crime is probably the most heinous criminal act I've ever seen. It really is nauseating. Folks, this is why we need to close the freaking borders. We need to put people, you and I, down at the southern border, and we need to control it. Lawmaker claims Parliament suspects religion irrelevant, suspect uh, Islamic extremist known to MI5. Al Jazeera viewers, quote, reacted to London terror attack with joy, unquote. Viewers of Al Jazeera's live stream on Facebook were spamming smiling emojis and thumbs up. Russia's, uh, Russia smear attempt to shut down dissenters. Obama administration passed law that will allow opponents to be shut down. Go look at all of former President Barack Obama's executive orders, if you would. Go check them out. Because, you know, he did some illegal stuff and we're not bitching about that. <clears throat> we're not holding him or anybody else that that uh, participated in those executive orders accountable for what they did against the American people? Are we not doing this? Kind of makes you wonder, folks. Kind of makes me wonder. Kind of puts me in a position to where I've got to sit there and point fingers and say, hey, you didn't do your job. And I'm talking to the alternative independent media. Huh. Kind of something to think about, isn't it? kind of puts you at a position to where you've got to at least question what has been told to you. Do you not? Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Folks, I'm going to go away. Check it out. American Liberty Radio Network on Spreaker.com and AmericanLibertyRadio.com. Sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. (laughs) 